And so in 2 Corinthians 3.18 in the voice, it says here, Now all of us with faces unveiled reflect the glory of the Lord as if we are mirrors. And I love this. So we are being transformed, metamorph meta metamorphosed into his image from one oh, radiance of glory to another, just as the spirit of the Lord accomplishes it. And I love that. We, you know, we know that in Romans 12, we're being, we're being uh, transformed into his image. Now, the thing about Esther is she was an orphan. And, and I, this is a time that we got to get over this orphan thing, yeah, yeah. this orphan spirit that we have operated in. The Father's blessing, what Rich was talking about. You know, when we know we are accepted in the beloved. Yes, we've all had stinky pasts. Most of us have. Some haven't. Most of us have. But you know what? God, I, I want to cut that. I'm cutting my losses. Yeah. How long are we going to hang on to certain things? We have to cut it off yeah. and move on. And so, you know, Esther was an orphan. She had an orphan spirit. She could have said to them, listen, I came from a background where I didn't know my parents. I didn't have anyone loving on me. I didn't have anyone speaking into my life. Yada, yada, yada. She didn't do that. She submitted to Mordecai in the Bible, who is a type of Holy Spirit. She submitted to the presence of Holy Spirit in leading her through the, the suffering portion or the, um, you know, that preparation portion for her breakthrough. But it's not when, listen, God doesn't anoint us just for us. He anoints us for the world, for your sphere of influence, for people around you. So if the enemy can just get you to keep your mind only on yourself, guess what? He's, he's afraid of you. So he wants you to do that so that what? You lose your authority and power of who he's called you to be. So God wants us to know, listen, for such a time as this, this orphan thing going on, he said, we're, we're going to break that thing off because it's a mindset. And it's a choice today where God is saying, come on, we're in his third day. This is a third day church. This is the seventh hour. Come on, I want to release that double in a portion, that double in anointing upon your life. We can't stay in that old. We can't listen to the lies of the enemy, the word of the Lord. I read it earlier about the washing of the water of the word. If you're struggling with something, you need to get in the word. Yes, we renounce. Yes, we take authority. It's the word. Psalm 119 says, how can a young man cleanse his ways? Through the meditation of the word. It's supernatural. Yeah. See, God wants to awaken us, and he wants us to, to rise up to that resurrection life because I'm telling you where we're at. When we go to minister to people, when we're there to talk, the glory of God is risen upon us. It says, arise and shine in the Amplified from the prostration and depression in which the enemy has tried to keep you. Arise and shine. Yeah. Listen, we can't, we got our mind all bogged down with all the junk. And so, again, I know you've heard this many times, but God is always marching us in 2 Corinthians. I love this, 2, 14 and 15 in the voice. It says, yes, yet I am so thankful to God who always marches us to victory under the banner of the anointed one. Isn't that awesome? Through us, he spreads the beautiful fragrance of his knowledge in every corner of the earth in a turbulent world where people are dying or being rescued. We are the sweet smell of the anointed to God our Father. You see, that's why we have to be embalmed. That's why we have to go through that process of dying, of giving up our right to be right. You know, we can be saved forever and still have a stinking religious attitude. You know, God is saying, listen, I want you to walk in humility. I want you to walk in the miracle working power of God. I believe in this end times, the church is really going to be displayed with the incredible miracle working power, wherever we're at. I don't, listen, this is for practice. It's, gonna, it's out there. What, do you have that word of life? Do you have that word of wisdom? Let, you know, people are looking like, how do you have hope? How do you have hope? When you're going through what you're going through, how are you surviving? We have a covenant of peace. Yeah. And I'll tell you, the God is going to apprehend the young people. Yeah. 
God is going to apprehend them unlike anything we've ever seen. That's why we have to pray. That's why men and women are called to pray. You know, we always see women, of course, we know women are very anointed, but we, we always see the women rise up. But let me tell you, it's time because the men of God have a portion that we don't have. And we have a portion, and they have a portion we don't have. So we need everybody to rise up together. Yeah. You know, it shouldn't be the most boring time when you have that relationship with God. You're looking and you love getting in that presence of the living God. He wants us to die to ourselves. That's where even in our worship time, we have to die to that, that oh, I don't feel like it. How long is this worship service going to go? Well, you know what? When you enter into the presence, the Bible says, in his presence there is fullness of joy. Amen. Listen, Satan has a way of trying to put your brain on, on freeze. You know, like you, you just get into this, what do you call that, uh, with neutral gear, where you, 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 you know, you, you're watching all your video, you're doing this, everything seems so cool. Let me tell you something, there is nothing new under the sun. Heartbreak is heartbreak. Whether you live in Genesis season or you're in this season, the sexual promiscuity and all that junk, everything is the same, and it's out to take you out. That's just the bottom line. He's, he's going to take you out. Yeah. Son, son, uh, son, son is nice too. But sin is just for a season until it grips you, until it takes you out. You're partying. You get high. You do your thing. You think no one's watching. You watch your movies. You think that it's going to be all right. Uh-uh. It's getting your heart. It's putting you on lockdown. And now we have to just, it's just enough is enough. I mean, it should never have been. And listen, God is not you know, pointing his, his scepter ready to whack you with it. What he is doing, he's extending it to you, but he's saying, look, I'm, I'm setting the boundary line, yeah. okay? The line is here. Now, you have a choice. Yeah. Now, do you want to be that person that's walking in victory and authority, or you want to be that one that's lukewarm? That's a choice. So I don't know about you. I've been in a lukewarm place. I've been in a cold place. I've been in a hot place. I'll tell you, hot is good. Hot is the best place because that lukewarm place, you're so frustrated you don't have any victory. You're always whining and complaining, right? Yeah. And so I said, Lord, I can't take it. He goes, well, do something about it, yeah. right? Get in the word. Worship. Believe the word of God. Speak the word. Decree the word. What are we doing? I, we hear so many problems. Not that you can't tell your problem, but what, what are you speaking more yeah. of? Yeah. In Romans, it says in Romans 8, 17, the message, it says, the resurrection life you receive from God is not timid or grave-tending. It's adventurous, adventurously expectant. Are you expectant? Greeting God with childlike faith. Like, what's next, Papa? God's spirit touches our spirit and confirms who we are. We are royalty. We are kings and priests. We are not orphans. We are not defeated. We are not low lives. We are not losers. We are not drug addicts. We are not porno uh, hunger, hungry people. We are people that have the anointing of the living God. We are royalty. We are kings. We are priests. We are uh, mighty, mighty people. We are breakers. We are the ones that won't take no for an answer. We will break through, and when we've done all the stand, we will stand. That's who we are. I'm not going to back down because he's yelling in my face. The word of God says that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And he causes us to triumph. Amen. So listen, that's the position. That's the stance we have to take. Do you remember the Wizard of Oz? I know it's a terrible movie. I always got yelled at about that movie. But remember that? And the big bad man, he was yelling at everybody until that little baby, itty bitty little Toto dog came and pulled the curtain away. And you had the man who was scared out of his wits speaking into the microphone. The Bible says that the enemy goes around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's not going to devour me. It says seeking whom he may devour. I'm sorry. When you're standing and you're taking authority. Martin was standing and taking authority over the word. He, he was struggling. That doesn't mean you don't have the issues in your heart. It means above all, Lord, I'm going to stand. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to get prayer. I'm going to renounce the stubbornness in my heart. I'm going to renounce the attitude problems. I'm going to renounce, Lord, the doubt and unbelief. But, Lord, help me. Help me get through this thing. Help me get through this thing. Oh, he loves us so much. 